Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. Imran Khan won power in Pakistan two years ago with a promise to root out corruption and take on the country's vested interests. So how's it going? Well, rising food prices and the COVID pandemic have left many Pakistanis feeling worse off, while the anti-corruption drive has become a political battleground. My guest today, Ishak Dar, was Pakistan's finance minister, a key lieutenant of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Now, both of those men are trying to rally opposition to Imran Khan. But how much credibility do they have? Ishak Dar, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for inviting me. Let us begin with your personal status, your legal status. Sure. You are a wanted man in Pakistan. Are you here in London to escape the judicial process? Well, not, not really. I think uh, you must be aware of the Pakistan history, that whenever in Pakistan over a period of 73 years, the corruption rhetoric has been used in the last uh, few dictatorships. And the current one isn't different because this regime is known to be under a covert coup or a judicial martial law. So I, I can prove uh, that there is nothing against me and I have all the evidence. Uh, I hope that you know that the prime allegation against me, my name was not in Panama paper, my name was not in uh, the 20th of April. Let, let, let me stop you, because some people will not be following this uh, in, in great detail. Sure. You're saying <laughs> your name was not in the Panama Papers. Nonetheless, sure. we learned an awful lot from those Panama Papers published in 2016 about sure. money is being stashed away in foreign bank accounts, and it involves some very top-level Pakistanis. And there was reason to believe that not just Nawaz Sharif's family was involved, but your family too. No. There, there isn't any mention of my family well, at I'm all. not saying there was a specific mention of your family, but the <laughs> but National they, Accountability Bureau decided after the publication of the Panama Papers to look very closely at yours and your family's interests, assets and accounts. Most welcome. And they found that there were grave no. uh, problems with no, your no, accounts. No, not at all. Not at all. Because you see, I'm sure that uh, you would be privy that it was the Supreme Court direction which set up a joint investigation team, which is extrajudicial uh, activity which uh, Supreme Court decided and there were two military intelligence members who were virtually governing out of the six members of the JIT. So you see there's a background. Well I, I, uh, I'm actually interested in, in what's known in Pakistan as the National Accountability Bureau yeah, which, which is, is the main agency of anti-corruption yeah, and it, they looked very carefully at you and your family's interests as you well know and in September 2017 they concluded that you and your family owned assets quote beyond your known sources of income. They said quite specifically <clears> the <throat> accused that is you has acquired assets and pecuniary, pecuniary interests resources in his own name and the name of dependents are totaling uh, roughly six million US dollars, more than 830 million Pakistani rupees. Now, is it your contention that the National Accountability Bureau has no integrity? It has lost its integrity long time back. It is, uh, it is uh, at, you know, an institution which is used uh, against political opponents. But you didn't say that with respect, sir, when you were a, a very senior serving government minister. No, I did. I, had, I held press conference. And I explained, by the way, this number is as per my tax return. I never missed. You see the prime allegation against me, which was, which was in, in the JIT report, on the basis of which Supreme Court directed NAB to file a reference, was that I did not file 20 years tax returns in Pakistan, 1981 to 2001. A UK qualified chartered accountant never missed uh, reporting his tax matters in UK when he was here uh, till 1976. And then in the North America, 
two years and in Pakistan since 70 and never missed any tax return. So this is such a, a you know, blatant allegation. Is it? Well, in that case, let, let's be very open and transparent yeah. with each other. I've interviewed many government officials and ministers around the world over many years and sure. they always say, oh, I'm not responsible for any corruption at all and I believe in transparency. I do. You do. Oh, so yes, how of course. many properties do you and your family own? It's all declared in my in, in my uh, in my tax returns. Well, well, you see, just this, give me the answer because I don't uh, know I, how many properties do you I, and your family I have, own. I have uh, my main residence uh, in Pakistan, which has been taken over by uh, you know by this uh, regime. Uh, you know, so I have I haven't got too many properties. But how I, many properties do you and your family I, my, own? My net worth is the what what has no, been no, reported. How many properties do you and your family own? One. One, my one sole property. you and your family own yes, one property. My sole residence. So all of these stories in the Pakistani press about multiple properties owned by your family mm. inside Pakistan, property interests <clears throat> overseas, including in Dubai, well, wherever, and we're but, sitting uh, in London. But, uh, what, we're what, sitting what, in London. You not own nothing in London. No, no your family, not the, just you, your family. No, not at all. Own nothing. No, because the, and you Dubai, see, the the government, Dubai. My my sons have just one villa, which is which is owned by them. They're in business for the last seventeen years. So when I asked you how many properties you and your family owned and you said one that wasn't that strictly is, true no the, the, no it is strictly true because they're adult they're married the 17 years they're in business so they're independent of me you you know they, very they, well they, that when the nab looked at your assets they were looking at you and your family i have no issue i have no issue my family everything is accounted for that's exactly you see, see if, if all of this is so clear-cut you only own one property in the entire world your tax records have been kept and given to the authorities over the last yeah. 20 years if everything this, is so crystal clear yeah. why do you not go to pakistan and make this case in a court of law well the court of law you know we you know my lawyers were there i i'm here for medical treatment a cervical issue do, do You've we, been here for what best yeah, part of three years on yeah, this medical issue. Almost yes, I am. I, are you still really suffering? Yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm, and, and you couldn't possibly get back to Pakistan. Well, let's see what's what's happening in Pakistan. What where are the human rights? What's happening in NAP custody? Where people have have dozens of people have, have been killed virtually. But sorry, you, you're you, saying there's that a people human being investigated by the NAB, the National Accountability Bureau, have been killed. He, in the NAB custody, many people have died. Yes, uh, I mean it's an open secret. You just you Google and you would you would have all the detail. I can I can leave detail with you if you want to. You see this 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 institution has been politically used against opponents. As I said, that I never missed a return. My the, the premise of the entire thing and whatever they say, my net worth is already if it is documented in my tax return and mm. my tax return is not missing. Mm. So it is totally accounted for. So what is the issue? The issue is issue is something different because Mr. Sharif was fighting for the civil supremacy and I have always been fighting for the for the financial and fiscal discipline and transparency. Right. So you, 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 you introduced the name Mr. Sharif. So I think we need to talk about Mr. Sharif as well as yourself because Nawaz Sharif is also in London, also on medical grounds. He unlike, man, man, manhandled by the NAB well, in his custody. He manhandled, you say. Yeah. The truth is Nawaz Sharif is a convicted criminal. Well, uh, I hope you know that both cases in which he has been convicted both case, in both uh, judgments, it has been written that the prosecution has not been able to prove any corruption, what? any kickback, any uh, loss to the exchequer. So what else we want? I, 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 I'm sorry, sir, but it is quite clear that he is a convicted criminal. And again, the Accountability Court, which works alongside the National Accountability Bureau, found against Mr. Sharif. I believe he was given a 10 year sentence and that was reduced ultimately to seven years. He was then allowed to come to London on medical grounds, the same medical grounds that you brought you to London too. So here there's two of you <laughs> sit. And now 